why Christians pray and they don't have results is because God is not just answering to your conscious, He's also answering to your subconscious. God is not just answering to your conscious, He's answering to your subconscious. So why else when they are crying out, Jesus, have mercy, don't you care, we are drowning, they're screaming. Uh, isn't it supposed to be good that you call on the name of the Lord because the Bible says call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved yet Jesus got and scolded them he said oh ye of little faith how long should I be with you wait a minute I thought last week you told us call upon you and this week you're scolding us for calling you make up your mind what is it this or that both because they were calling upon him in, in the conscious, they were following a theology. In their subconscious, they were doubting him. So does God respond to your conscious or does he respond to your subconscious? He's rebuking them for the subconscious. Imagine if, if they would have went to their mama and said, Mama, I did what you have taught me all my life. You said when I was in trouble, I have to cry out to the Lord. But when I did cry out, he scolded me for crying out. So somewhere mama's theology was incomplete. What is the incompleteness? The complete theology is that God is not just interested in what your conscious nature is doing. He's interested is in your subconscious. In fact, your subconscious nature is more powerful than your conscious nature. I'm telling you, your subconscious prayers brings more results. Your faith has to be organic and subconscious and that is what produces greater results. Confessions of your faith. How do you know that you're conscious and subconscious? You see, the deception is, this is what happens. Many Christians have practiced religion practiced what religion so when trouble comes they're saying Jesus Jesus I, I'm telling you have you have you seen church members casting demons out yes. oh man it's fun sight you have to watch it they're casting demons out they stand about 12 feet far from the demon and they start screaming in the name of Jesus out out and they keep going back out I don't know who is going out you or the demon <laughs> if you've been in church long enough you've seen one of these they wait for the pastor to go around and then they throw stuff at the devil <laughs> I'm telling you it's terrible it's not the conscious nature that demons respond to even demons respond to your subconscious nature how many of you know demons are smarter than dogs, right? Do you know dogs can sense fear? If a dog can understand your fear, your concerns, are you telling me Satan doesn't know? You're like, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you shall not touch. And Satan is like, she doesn't believe a thing she's saying. Satan is calling a few more friends. Come bro, sit down. Come, sit down. She doesn't believe this. Come, come, come. Join me. <laughs> I've had believers who I've heard them teach, you know, Satan cannot uh, read your mind. Then how is it that Satan does all this? Because you see, the way God has created you is when you see somebody and you feel an attraction to that somebody, Satan don't know what you're thinking. But he sees certain chemicals being released. It is only the children of God that are not able to read the signs. That's in your Bible. He said, my children don't know the times and seasons. But Satan is a master at learning signs. He studies your heartbeat. He said, oh, wait a minute. Right now, her heartbeat is going. So he doesn't need to read your mind. 
he knows your pulse he knows your heart beat he sees the chemicals being released he sees sweat glands responding he sees every bit of information that is coming from you and he can now know that you're worried about losing your job tomorrow you didn't even share what you were thinking with anybody else but just by the way you're rolling around in the bed satan knows that his trick is working on you he doesn't need to read your mind he's studying you he's watching you he's seeing the way you're tossing around he knows what chemicals are being released is it anxiety is it attraction is it lie everything produces a certain chemical and he's been studying humans for thousands and thousands and thousands of years from adam he knows how our body works are you understanding so he studies to know at what point can i shut the spirit from flowing out of him so he comes around and fills you with attacks of your mind <sighs> now you guys are pushing me to prove this more maybe this will help god uses your subconscious and the realms of your conscious to communicate to you okay even when you hear a man of god says i hear god in my ear it's not god came and said hello <laughs> when you hear somebody say i hear the holy spirit saying it's not somebody it, that's not how it works god speaks to your conscious god speaks to your subconscious both he speaks to both the parts that your conscious is not able to pick up is be, still being picked up by your subconscious Okay let me give you a verse that will help you Daniel 7 was one what does it say in the first year i'm reading from the king james version in the first year of belshazzar king of babylon daniel had a dream and visions of heaven upon his be- oh, wait did i get it right sorry 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 guys i have to read it properly had a dream and visions of heaven upon his be- Sorry I'm maybe I got the wrong version. Can you give me ESV? Maybe ESV is better because this version is messing me up. King of Babylon Daniel saw a dream and visions of heaven. Is it heaven? My goodness, this is big trouble now. What do we do, pastor? This is big issues now. We can't change the Bible, right? It's in your Bible. Ah, talk to me now. It's in your Bible. Visions where? Ah. Ah. Wow. Wow. So you're telling me this guy is a major prophet. We thought there was some creature that came in, you know, flying and it was all physical and and the table flew and he flew and and now we are finding information of how daniel prophesied all these end time revelations that we we theologians have been studying it for decades and centuries and we we study it in textbooks and we study all this with so much attention it was all in his i didn't say that you said it i didn't say that. i'm not part of this Come on now. I need you to open up your mind to receive this word right now. Don't limit who you are. Imagine many of you said, what if it is in my head? But that is how the Holy Spirit works. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? What is the job of the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? He brings you into remembrance. What is the job of the Holy Spirit? He's bringing you into remembrance. What did the angel of the Lord do when he was wrestling with Jacob? He said, what is your name? Are you telling me God didn't know his name? So what was the purpose of him asking the name? Jacob. 
you want to go into your future we got to fix some things of your past the man is wrestling with an angel an angel of the lord could have just snapped and just taken him into his breakthrough no 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 the way we are going into your future is by fixing something that you been throwing under the carpet you been just ignoring it you just it's the elephant in the room nobody everybody knows about it but nobody wants to talk about it but before i can take you into your breakthrough let's talk about your name oh, no 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 don't let's, let's not bring up my name god because that's the, that's the part of me that that has hurt me the most that's that's how all my friends made fun of me and, uh, and my father called me that my father in law called me that my wife called me that everybody i've complicated my life with the web of lies and now in the night of an encounter the god is taking me to the next level god is taking me to the new chapter you're coming and asking me <sighs> my name is that fair are you are you bringing up my past i'm not bringing you up your past to humiliate you jacob i'm reminding you certain things so i can redeem you from that hey somebody break your alabaster jar and shout an amen when some injustice happened to you you were too young you were too small you had no understanding your spirit was not as strong as your spirit is right now you were too small in that age for you to even be able to function in the authority and take authority over that spirit and take authority over that lie and cancel that that time you were too weak so you became bound by that moment in life and now 40 years later god still has to talk to moses and say let's talk let's talk moses 40 years later he still god is still bringing egypt out of him ezekiel 3 was 14 Are you ready? So the spirit lifted me up and took me away. Everybody say to where? To where? Okay. And I went in bitterness. Wait a minute. Brother, are you sure this is the spirit of God? Because you you did you just say the spirit of God took you in bitterness? Okay. In the heat of my spirit. but the hand of the lord was strong upon me he's saying but everybody say but he's saying my experience doesn't make sense but the hand of the lord was upon me then i came to them of the captivity at tel aviv that dwelt by the river of keba and i sat where they sat and remained there astonished among them for 7 days the spirit of god carries him into a place that is very very painful into a place that was was giving him nightmares because ezekiel is part of a group of people that were taken as slaves as exile and where does the spirit of god take him into into midst of captivity lord i'm already in captivity why don't you take me to you know some switzerland or you know some nice mountain and give me a break why are you taking me into more captivity because the glory of god is going to shine in the midst of your captivity things have to be corrected spiritually he went there and the bible says he was astonished how many of you been astonished last week <laughs> This guy he's saying I don't understand I'm I'm supposed to be blessed right now if the spirit of God is taking me I shouldn't be in bitterness I don't understand but he was astonished and it came to pass at the end of 7 days that the word of the Lord came unto me the word of the Lord came and at the end of 7 days the word of the Lord came son of man and God began to speak to him 
God is going to carry some people into the place where it looks like a bondage, looks like captivity, looks like bitterness, looks like the spirit of heat. It looks traumatic, but God is going to take you to the place that has held you captive for a long time. And he's about to release the word of God that is going to come to you and break you from that captivity. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, is not physical. The warfare, the weapons of our warfare are what? Not physical, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5. Are you ready? He's talking about spiritual warfare. Weapons of a warfare, not physical, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse 5, casting down imaginations. You're thinking spiritual warfare is happening physically in certain location. Whatever happened physically in a certain location does not exist in that location, but it still exists in your mind. The location changed from a physical place to a place in your mind. What does the Bible say? Casting down imaginations. Ah. Because one verse before that it says pulling down of strongholds. And then he's talking about strongholds as imaginations. Your imagination can become a stronghold. Okay, casting down imaginations and listen to me. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Hey, hey, Ratov Rokosia. Did you hear what it says? There is an imagination, there is a lie, there is a trauma. Are you with me? Yes. I have to stop if you're not with me. Talk to me. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Now is when you need to be more active. Come on. Are you with me? There is a memory, there is a trauma, there is a lie, there is an imagination, there is an incident that the Bible is saying, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, every high thing, meaning anything that is beyond your capacity, every high thing, what are high things? Mountains, giants, giants in your mind, giants in your memory, giants in your past. Membrokoza, tonight is going to be brought down in the name of Jesus. Springing into captivity. Every, listen, 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 hear me, hear me. Spiritual warfare, everybody likes spiritual warfare, right? Everybody likes spiritual warfare, right? Talk to me now. Ah, you're not a Christian in the church long enough if you don't like spiritual warfare because everybody wants to learn spiritual warfare. Here you go. Every spiritual warfare, the next verse, all of it is in the mind level. Mind level. Remember, again, back to practical lessons. When I did that, it is because the spirit understands the healing that has happened in the mind. You cannot have victory on the outside in the kingdom if your mind doesn't have victory. Look, here it says, bringing into captivity. Remember, this is the word that is going to launch you. Rante Brugosia. So are you ready? Yes. What is the Lord going to do? Bringing into captivity every thought. Okay. Come on. Every thought. thought to the obedience of Oh my goodness. We've been doing spiritual warfare wrong. We've been binding every demon except your thoughts. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You are going to have the biggest victory of your life tonight. Bringing those thoughts into captivity by grace. Hey! Yeah, 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 yeah
let's worship and enter. Loga Gambira Vari Yulnu Vishwasa Kappa Lodi Yutta Yatra Jayu Nyan Kruse No Ki. Hello, welcome to Revive Nations. We are so glad that you are here. Thank you for tuning in and I hope that these videos have been blessing you and encouraging you. Please write to us and let us know how these videos have been impacting you. We would love for you to join us on our social media platforms as well. And if you would like to hear the full sermons, you can download the app that is Shaiju Matthew, which is available both on Android and Apple devices. And thank you to all the financial supporters to help us to reach this word to the nations. Until we meet again, stay under the mighty hand of God. Shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 